Hi and welcome to another Carpenter Tutoring Tutorial. I'm Amy and today we are going to be talking about two methods that you can use to solve for variables and equations that contain fractions. The first way is that we can find a common denominator for any fractions, add them together, and then solve from there. The second way is that we can use multiplication to get rid of any denominators we may have and then solve from there. So we'll take a look at both methods with the same equation so you can see how they differ from each other and then pick whichever one you like. The good news is that both of them will work in every single situation, so sometimes it may just come down to a question of which method seems easier for the particular problem that you're facing. Let's look at the addition method first. The addition method tells us to turn any fractions that we have on the same side of the equal sign into equivalent fractions with common denominators, and that way we can combine them together as long as they are like terms. The first thing I see in this one is that they would be like terms because they both have x's in them, so it's worth me going through the trouble of finding common denominators for these. With my denominators of 3 and 2, I see that I can't turn the smaller denominator into the larger one, so I'm not going to get away with just multiplying one of these. But I can look for a common multiple of both 3 and 2, and the first one that pops to mind is 6. So I want to get a denominator of 6. In order to make that happen for an existing denominator of 2, I'll have to multiply by 3, and I know I have to do that on the top as well. And in order to do that for an existing denominator of 3 through multiplication, I'll have to multiply by 2, which means I'll also have to multiply by 2 on the top here. Now that I know what I'm going to be multiplying each of my fractions by, I can complete that multiplication and rewrite the equation. So 2 times 2x will give me 4x over 2 times 3 will give me 6, plus x times 3 will give me 3x over 2 times 3, which will give me 6, equals 7. Now that I do have common denominators, I can combine these fractions together. So 4x over 6 plus 3x over 6 will give me 7x over 6 equals 7. And from here, I can start to solve normally using SADMEP, our opposite order of operations that we use for solving variables. I don't have any addition or subtraction relationships with x, so I jump to multiplication and division. Now I could resolve my issue with 7 or 6 first. Technically, SADMEP would tell you to do 7 first, since as you read from left to right and from top to bottom, it's the first operation you come across. Personally, I always like to get rid of denominators first though, and the order doesn't really matter in this case when you're dealing with fractions. So I am going to start by multiplying by 6 on both sides, and I'm multiplying by 6 to undo the division relationship that x currently has with 6. That will give me 7x equals 42, and then we can divide by 7 on both sides to break the multiplication relationship between 7 and x to give us x equals 6. Let's take a look at the same problem, but using the multiplication method. What the multiplication method tells us to do is just get rid of the denominators that you see. Don't worry about finding common denominators, just get those denominators out of there. And the way that we do that is taking each denominator and multiplying the entire equation by that denominator. So in my first step, I will be multiplying both sides of this equation by 3. And the reason that I'm multiplying by 3 is because it's the first denominator that I have. When I multiply the first term by 3, it's just going to cause the 3 in the denominator to cancel out. So I'll end up with 2x. But in the second term, the 3 gets multiplied into the numerator only. That's because of our multiplication rules with fractions. So this will give me 3x over 2 now. And I can't forget to multiply on the right side of the equation as well. So 7 times 3 will give me 21. I still have a denominator in this problem though, so I'm going to have to repeat this process with that second denominator. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. When I distribute the 2 to the 2x, that will give me 4x. And then when I distribute the 2 to the 3x over 2, it's just going to cancel out the 2 that's in the denominator. So I'll we'll end up with plus 3x. And then 21 times 2 gives me 42. Now I can start combining like terms on the left side of the equation. So 4x plus 3x will give me 7x. And 42 remains unchanged. 
Now I can use SADMEP to break relationships between X and other values on the same side of the equal sign. We just have the relationship with seven, which is a multiplication relationship. So I can divide by seven on both sides and get that X equals six. So we can see that both solution methods gave us the same answer, X equals six. Each method can be more helpful in different situations than the other. I personally like to use the multiplying method most of the time unless I see that it's going to give me really, really big numbers once I multiply everything out. If that's the case, then I'll shift over to the addition method. But either of them can work in any circumstance. No matter how you choose to solve these problems, finding a pattern that is consistent and easy for you is the absolute key to success. So I hope one of these might be one of those ways for you and might make this process easier. If you have any questions or other topics that you'd like to see covered, please let me know in the comments. If you enjoy our content, I hope you'll consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. Thank you so much for spending part of your day with me and I'll catch you next time.